There are a ton of very popular and sought after albums that have been out of print or awaiting repress for many months, if not years. The Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, and Melancholy are two examples of those. They have recently come back into print and it has created an absolute frenzy in the vinyl community. We will discuss on this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you're in the U.S., you can shop online at ntxvinyl.com and would love it if you would subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So let's talk about Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, and Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. But in reality, these are just examples. This could be any artist. This could be just about any album that is popular or really sought after. Like I mentioned, um, I'm just using these in, as an example because they just recently got reissued and it really has created a lot of confusion, frustration, um, and anxiety, I think, with uh, you know record buyers who want these albums and it's just not as easy to buy them as one would hope and think. And there are actually reasons behind that and I'm gonna kind of explain uh, what's happening in the vinyl record industry and why it's making it difficult for you as someone who just wants to buy a record. Um, you know, there's a lot of hurdles you have to go through and guesswork to figure out where to buy and how to buy and if you're going to actually get the album even after you do buy it, right? And so these are issues that I've, uh, I've seen over the last week. I have been inundated with questions from customers and friends asking if I'm going to get copies of these. I have seen multiple, multiple threads and discussions and posts um, about people have pre-ordered the album and their order was then canceled and now they're ordering somewhere else and they're hoping it fills. Again, very frustrating, um, very confusing for the consumer and that's what uh, I want to uh, hopefully uh, provide some clarity on, right? So first of all, let's talk about why this is happening. Well, it's simply supply and demand, right? There have been a ton of new collectors who have started buying vinyl records in the past two to three years, right? The pressing plants cannot keep up with that demand, so it has created an environment to where if you started collecting records, let's say two years ago, and you're like, man, I love Smashing Pumpkins, I'd love to get their classic albums from the 90s, wait a second, I can't buy them anywhere. I can't buy them from my local record store, I can't find them on Amazon. They're simply out of print, unless I wanna to go to the secondary market and pay, you know, uh, three, four, five times what the retail price was, right? And that's what's been going on with these two albums in particular. Um, over the past, I would say, 18 months to two years, there's not been a consistent repress. There has been some that have trickled out, probably back stock that have been found. But as far as being widely available, both Siamese Dream and Melancholy um, have been essentially out of print. So you've got the reissue of Siamese Dream. This uh, originally was reissued in 2011, came out in 93. Uh, the first reissue, this version with a different cover art, came out in 2011, like I mentioned. And then you've got the Melancholy and the Infant Sadness box set, came out in 95 originally. Um, and this reissue, this special version, 4LP box set, uh, was uh, originally pressed in 2012. So since 2011, 2012, these have been in and out of stock, just like any other record, right? Then the pandemic hits. Prior to the pandemic, both of these were readily available to record stores. They were readily available to consumers. Then the pandemic hits, demand for vinyl records goes off the charts, and you've got all these people who started collecting since then, and they can't buy these albums, which are very popular, well-known, sought-after albums. You know, these are not obscure records. These are not in, in any, you know, limited edition or anything like that. These are readily available albums. But the fact of the matter is, the label has been waiting to be able to press these because you have to get capacity at the pressing plants. And this is just one or two albums, right? There are hundreds and thousands of titles across several different genres, um, and they're all trying to get their albums pressed to meet that demand, right? So if you started collecting the last two years, you had to pay, you know, 150, 200, 300 dollars for these albums, which is crazy. And it created this environment where the prices continued to go up on the secondary market because people were impatient. 
that's what creates a secondary market when there's not enough supply to meet the demand and the consumers are impatient and they want it now well then the prices go up and up and up that's what we've seen happen right so what does it look like from the record store standpoint where well, record stores can't get them We've all been asking for the last two years, hey, when are you going to get Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, and Melancholy back in stock? The distributors have no idea. They don't know either when they're coming. That's the most frustrating part is we don't have any more information than you do. All we can do as record stores is back order the albums. That means we will say, hey, I know when Siamese Dream actually does get repressed, whenever it may be, I want to get 50 copies. So I can go ahead and earmark that with a certain distributor. And then when it does become available, I cross my fingers and I hope I get those copies based on availability, based on the number they press, right? It's not a, it's not a, a sure thing by any means. And in some cases, because again, uh, demand far outweighs the supply that it doesn't happen that easy and record stores don't get their full allotment of what they back ordered over time. So let's talk about the distributor, right? So the distributor says, well, you know, the label came to us and asked us how many albums, let's just say Siamese Dream, how many copies of Siamese Dream do you want when it gets repressed? And the distributor says, oh, I'll take 5,000 because we've got, you know, a couple thousand back ordered already and we know that demand is pent up and we'll easily be able to sell those 5,000 and that will be a great product for us, right? Well, that's just one distributor, but there are several distributors, major distributors, just in the US alone, not even talking internationally. So let's say there's five major distributors in the United States, which is pretty close. And let's say they all say they want 5,000. Simple math, right? 25,000 copies of Siamese Dream. Let's pretend, I'm not saying I know the number of the pressing, I'm just throwing out fictional numbers. Let's say that 25,000 is the number that are pressed and each of those five distributors has asked for 5,000, right? So then the label says, great, we've got a big order for 25,000 copies of Siamese Dream. The label goes to the pressing plants. You know, could be one plant, could be many plants, depends on how big the order is. And they say, we need 25,000 copies of this. And the, and the pressing plants these days look at them and say, okay, that's going to take about 18 months or that's going to take 12 months. Whoa, 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 we can't wait that long. We've got so many distributors telling us they've got all these back order. We've got record stores clamoring for them because their customers are all clamoring for them. We need these 25,000 albums. Pressing plant says, it's not possible. We're backed up for eight, 10, 12, 15 months before we can get these to you. But we'll tell you what we can do. We'll, we'll press 5,000 now. And then in three months, we'll press another 5,000. And then, you know, maybe three months after that, we'll get you the rest. We'll get you the other 15,000, right? That sounds great. Not really, because now you've got a situation to where the distributor has to make sure and communicate to all of the record stores, it took hundreds of record stores that, hey, what you've been back ordering with us over the past months or years, there's a pretty good chance you're not gonna get those now. Now that communication flow is terrible, I can tell you right now. The communication between the label and the distribution and the stores, it's almost non-existent. I talk to my distributors all the time and ask them, hey, do you know when anything's coming? Do you know when this is gonna re get repressed? Do you know if it's gonna get repressed? Is it out of print? They have no idea. They don't know when it's landing up until what I've been told, a couple weeks before if they're lucky, sometimes the week of, meaning Siamese Dream and Melancholy just landed and there's a pretty good chance distributors didn't know about it until the week it landed in their warehouse. They literally get it, they see it on a packing list and go, oh, amazing, they finally got repressed but how many did they get? Well, they had requested 5,000, right? Remember, each of them wanted 5,000, equaling to 25,000. Well, that initial run was only of 5,000 total. So you can do the math there and see that each of the distributors is gonna get a tiny fraction of what they actually wanted. That means that all of the back orders that have been placed the last two years, only a small percentage of those are gonna fill. That's incredibly frustrating for record stores because again, they have customers who are asking for these and they simply cannot meet the demand. A few months later, another 5,000 will come and the same thing's gonna happen again. A few months later, another 5,000 will come, the same, it's gonna be cyclical, right? Because the demand is that high. So it creates this environment of FOMO, fear of missing out for the consumer to where when these things actually do become available, a lot of vinyl collectors, especially ones who kind of keep track of new releases and reissues and they're waiting on things to be repressed. They know that when something gets announced or you should know when something gets announced, if it's something you want, you should jump on it right away because the reality is it's probably already all sold out before it even lands in the record stores.
that's the thing to understand here is that because record stores have back ordered all these, it's going to be gone before you even blink. So the reissue pops up. It creates an absolute frenzy of people trying to buy it because they're afraid of missing out on it. And within a week or two, gone. Siamese Dream and Melancholy will be gone for another few months, a year. I have no idea. Neither does our distributor. The only person who knows that is the label who's directly communicating with the pressing plants and dealing with the coordination of the timing of when they will get repressed. And none of that information trickles down. It never has. And I don't think it ever will. So you can imagine the frenzy that this creates. And I have seen it over the last week. People have been um, purchasing from, you know, kind of big box online retailers. They've been purchasing from local independent record stores and hoping that they get a copy of this. Now, what about the timing? This is the most interesting thing over the last week. Um, the first stores, if you can call them that, that actually got allocation of these were the big box online retailers. I'm talking about deep discount. I'm talking about pop market. Um, in other cases, you know, Amazon or, or maybe even Walmart would get things like this before. Now, why do the, why do the bigger boxes, why do the bigger online stores get more or get them first? Well, they get them first because they order more in a lot of cases. Meaning if you're a, um, a buyer and you place a much larger order for let's say a thousand copies, well, that seller is going to give you preferential treatment and get you yours first because you made a massive order. I'm a small little shop. I couldn't afford to purchase a thousand copies of either of these. And I simply wouldn't want to because I'd be, I don't have the space to store them and I don't have that many customers in a lot of ways. Right? So this is no different than a lot of other industry industries. The larger the entity, the larger the, the retail store, the bigger purchases they make from the distributors, the better fill they will get. So if I'm a large store and I go direct to the distributor and I say, I want a thousand, maybe I get 750, maybe I get 500, maybe I get all, all thousand, right? That all happens first before it trickles down to the independent retailers, right? And that's incredibly frustrating. So, the first inkling of melancholy, especially coming available was through these big box kind of online retailers and independent retailers, myself included, saw that and went, are you kidding me? They finally landed and now I don't have any and everybody is purchasing from these big box online retailers and it's at a great discounted price, right? That's the other thing to consider. Those types of retailers, they get better prices because they're buying in larger quantities. That's just how retail works, accept it, right? Um, but it, the, the frustration remains is people, customers like yourself who want these records, they're going to their local record store and saying, hey, I saw Melancholy, I saw Siamese Dream, I saw they're getting available, are you getting any? I have no idea. I have to wait days and in some cases weeks to learn if I'm even going to get a percentage of what I've back ordered. And it differs with every distributor. It differ, differs with every sales rep as far as who you're working with, the relationships you've built, whether or not you're going to get your allotment or a number of copies that you've actually requested, right? So there's a lot of different cooks in the kitchen in regards to how this works. It's not a surefire thing. And it's different for every title too. Keep in mind, this is, these are just examples. This is just one artist with two albums. Think about all the different genres and all of the different reissues and albums that have been awaiting repress. You're talking hundreds or thousands of these happening on a daily and weekly basis. So how do you keep track of all that and ensure you've got everything back ordered so that when a customer comes to you, says, Hey, do you have this? You go, Oh yeah, I've got it back ordered. Like there's no way to keep track of all that. So you, you do the best you can and you, you back order what you can based on what you know your customer customer base is gonna be interested in, but it's very difficult to track at all. And in most cases, you miss out on things simply because it just flew underneath the radar and you didn't know about it, right? The distributors do the best job they can in um, advertising what they have coming when they know about it. But like I mentioned, a lot of things like reissues, um, catalog titles, they just pop up out of the blue. It's not like a pre-order of a new album where there's a date or even a reissue of a new album where they put a date on it. These are just catalog titles that are being repressed. So this is not a new release. Like I said, 2011, 2012, they've been repressing them since then, since they were originally pressed. So, um, so this frenzy that I've been seeing over the last week is just incredibly, interesting one to see how the the industry is evolving to see how this hobby is evolving in regards to the retail component but i think more than anything it's just frustrating for consumers because i've seen countless scenarios where people have ordered from the big box online online retailers that have much more quantity and then those orders get canceled 
well, why do they get canceled? Why are they selling something if they don't have it yet? Well, that's a great question. The issue is that, that they placed an order, let's say, going back to my example, let's say I'm an online big box retailer, deep discount or pop market or Amazon or whatever, and they say, I want a thousand copies of this. They think they're gonna get a thousand copies of that because it's just a line item for them in a massive order of all of these albums because again, they're, they're purchasing in bulk quantities, not only of uh, vinyl, but also of CDs and consumer products and all this other stuff, right? That they're gonna sell through these big box online shops. Um, so they assume they're going to get their total fill. So when their database is updated and their website's updated, it says a thousand available. They send out their newsletter, they announce it, and all thousand of those get purchased up. Then news trickles down. Hey, guess what? That 25,000 that were originally ordered to spread out across those five distributors, well, that's not gonna happen. That's gonna happen, but it's gonna take a year to get all those. So the first little batch is 5,000. So of those 1,000 you ordered, big box online retail store, you're gonna get 500. Well, they already pre-sold 1,000 of them, right? So there's 500 consumers that are gonna get canceled on. Happens all the time, and it's gonna to continue to happen because of this cyclical uh, scenario to where pressing plants can't keep up, um, you know, bigger jobs like these, and again, I'm just making up these numbers, but I think they could probably be reasonable, honestly, for the amount of demand for these particular albums. But this scenario is going to continue to repeat itself as other albums in a similar vein get reissued, right? So that's obviously incredible, incredibly frustrating for the consumer because they thought they had an album that they've really been wanting, and now, they're, uh, now their order got canceled. So now what do you do as a consumer? Well, you scramble and you're like, who else has this? Well, maybe I can get it over here. Or maybe I can message my local shop and see if they're getting it and wait on that and hope that they're gonna get some. It's a very frustrating thing. It's frustrating for me. Obviously, it's frustrating for uh, the record buyer, but I assure you, it's just as frustrating for the distributor. I'm telling you, I'm talking, to them, I'm talking to them on a regular basis about this, and they don't know. They don't know how many they're going to get. They don't know when they're going to land. I've talked to distributors about some titles, and they were like, hey, it's nowhere on our radar. We're not going to get this. And then out of the blue, the next day it lands, and you get them because, again, they're as surprised as we are. And I don't think that's anybody trying to be sneaky about it. It's simply a matter of how the industry has always worked and how the communication flows from the label to the plants and the distributors and the stores trickling down the consumer, right? So it's created this, again, it's a frenzy, and I, I, I'm just using these examples, uh, these albums as examples. It's going to happen again as a lot of albums get repressed that have been awaiting being pressed for, for the last couple of years because of that pent-up demand. So... Um, you know, I, as of this moment, don't have an allotment of Siamese Dream or Melancholy. I'm hoping to get them in really soon. But again, it's just a hope. You never really know till they actually land. And in my case, as an independent retailer, I normally don't sell anything unless it's a pre-order with a date on it. I don't pre-sell anything until I actually have it in my hands. And I would say a lot of independent record stores do the same thing just because it's a really dicey proposition to do that because you end up potentially disappointing a lot of customers. And I'd rather just not sell it at all versus pre-sell a whole bunch and then have to cancel them because that really just creates a bad customer experience for the record buyer. And it makes you as a shop owner look really bad if you're selling product that then you can't deliver on. But let's be honest, if you're a big box online retailer, you don't care about that. Like you're just looking for quantity. You put it at a lower price so you can sell more of them, so you can uh, move as much quantity as possible. And if you end up having to cancel a whole, whole bunch of orders, so be it. It doesn't matter to them because there's no face behind that company. There's nobody behind that company that is necessarily responsible to the consumer. Now, the consumer has a choice to not shop with them again, obviously. And that's, that's your choice, you know, you're making that choice. Um, and in, but in a lot of cases I get it because there are albums like this that pop up and you think, man, I, I guess I better order it from them because I don't know if my local shop's even gonna get it. They can't tell me if they're gonna get it because they don't know. So who do you trust here? And a lot of times you just have to make a gamble and purchase one. A lot of people purchase it from the big box and then they also pre-order it or uh, try and put it on hold with their independent retail in hopes to get one from somewhere, which is, again, just crazy. All you're trying to do is buy a record. You're just trying to get the music you love 
and you're trying to support the artists and you're trying to support, um, you know, the vinyl format, which is an amazing thing. Um, but these days it can, it can be hard to do that. It really can as a consumer. Um, I, I understand that it's frustrating. Like I said, not only for you as a buyer, but for the, uh, for the record shops and the distributors. So it's a, uh, it's a crazy kind of environment we're living in right now. We're going to see it time and time again, as these re reissues come back into press. But I, again, I don't think it's going to be very short lived because, you know, these albums, they're going to be out of print again really shortly. They may pop back up in a few months. It may take another year. No one knows. And that's the most frustrating part. So I hope that was informative. If you uh, if you don't care about Smashing Pumpkins, um, keep in mind, these were just examples. Like I've mentioned several times, this is, this is uh, you know, there are no other genres. There are no genres that are immune to this scenario. It really comes down to just whether or not that particular album and artist is popular enough to command such a frenzy, right? So... Thanks for watching as always. I hope this was, uh, hope this helped uh, paint a clearer picture for anyone who's been frustrated over the last couple of weeks um, as the Smashing Pumpkins reissues have come out. Um, I hope to make an announcement soon that I'll have some available, but you never know. So as always, thanks so much for the support here on the YouTube channel. I will pop up some more videos now. Stick around, check out some more content, and we'll see you again next time on Talking About Records.